Welcome to Salisbury University On The Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. My name is Susan Purnell. With lectures and other special activities, Salisbury University commemorates African American History Month in February. Those are just some of the enriching cultural events scheduled at SU this semester. Here to tell us about them are Dr. Aston Gonzalez, Assistant Professor of History and Chair of SU's African American History Month Committee, and June Krell Salgado, SU Cultural Affairs Director. First is Aston. So welcome back. Aston, great to see you. You too. Thank you for Here having you me are. back. Second year yes. at this. So before we start discussing all the events coming up this month, let's talk a little bit about the history of African American History Month. Sure. It was created in 1926 by an African American historian and activist named Carter G. Woodson. Mm -hmm. And he really created the month in order to celebrate the contributions of people of African descent, especially at a time when their contributions were ignored or suppressed. Mm -hmm. So um, now more than 90 years later, we're still carrying on his legacy. I hadn't realized it had been that long. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Uh, now the university has a lot of events going on and usually there's one particular theme. What, what would this year's be? So this year we're going with the, the national theme that was actually created by the organization that Carter G. Woodson helped found, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And this year's theme is Black Migrations. So this is a great opportunity actually for us to uh, be able to concentrate on the kinds of contributions that black people have made um, across the globe. Mm -hmm. um, for the oh, last so it's not just American, it's across the globe. Correct. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Um, I know the first event is uh, Dr. J.M. Blackett mm -hmm. uh, of the Andrew Jackson, uh, he's the Andrew Jackson Professor of History at Vanderbilt. What will he be speaking about particularly? He'll be speaking about the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 and how African American activists resisted, how they pushed back against this, this policy, this law that really took away rights from African Americans, uh, legal rights to defend themselves in court if they're accused of being escaped slaves. So this law actually helps to prompt uh, the kidnapping of free black people in the United States and then their conscription into slavery because they can't defend themselves in court There's by their own testimony. There's actually a law mm -hmm. that said they can't defend themselves in court. Correct. By their own testimony. You know, in these days and times, it's so hard to believe that. You know, it's... Mm. And it was on the books for more than 10 years. Gosh. Uh, when will Dr. Blackett be speaking and where? So he'll be speaking on Thursday, February 7th mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. in the Wicomico room in the Guerrero, Guerrero Student... Center. Great. Union. Okay. Later in the month, then, you have guests from New York Public Library Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. What will these guests be talking about? So we're really excited because two librarians from the Schomburg Center are coming to speak about the Green Book, which is essentially a, a guide for African Americans that's published between 1936 and 1966. And it lists where black travelers can go essentially to have safety, um, to find out where they're welcome at hotels, at restaurants, at bars, and even at service stations, gas stations. Does this have anything to do with the movie, The Green Book, that's just come out with uh, Mahershala Ali and Viggo Mortensen? It's the inspiration. It yes. is the inspiration for it. Yes. And when will these librarians be speaking? They'll be speaking on Wednesday, February 20th in the Wicomico Room in the Guerrero Student okay, Center. Okay, so this is where these uh, talks are. Mm -hmm. Another presenter, Dr. Martha Jones uh, of Johns Hopkins, will be here also later as a part of this series. And what is her particular subject? So Martha Jones will be speaking about her research that went into her new book, Birthright Citizens, which is about how African-American activists really challenged the legal restraints or the limitations that were placed on them. And so she's really focusing on Baltimore in her talk. Mm -hmm. And this is also the, the city that's the focus of her book. Mm -hmm. And she's really interested in how African Americans push for the idea of birthright citizenship. So sh she's interested in how African Americans are using legal strategies to gain more rights before the Civil War. Will that be in the same place, the Wakamka Room? Or? So it'll be in, the, um, the, in Purdue Hall. Okay. 
at 7 p.m. There. 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 Auditorium there. Yes, in okay. 156. Okay, and that, do you know that date? Yes, it's Thursday, February 21st. 21st. I don't know how you all make your decisions, but you always get such interesting speakers. What's the process for choosing the speakers? So, so we look to see how um, the speakers that we are thinking of will be able to fit into the national theme. Mm -hmm. And we're also interested in the ways that the national theme can attract audience members. We're always interested in what appeals to the broad community mm -hmm. members that we have here around Salisbury. And you get a pretty good attendance at these. A lot of yes. uh, the community members attend as well, right? Not yes. just students. Absolutely. Right. Um, now, there's also more than just the speakers. Um, my favorite part of this month is the soul food dinner that goes on. Um, that That's going to be part of it again this year? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. And that's over at the, the bistro room. At the bistro, mm -hmm. at the commons. Mm -hmm. and Is Bernard Sweetney, who always plays with his quartet, going to be here again this year? He'll be here again, yes. Oh, good. I love that part. He's fantastic. Yeah, he really yes. is. Now, if you want to attend, I know this is one of the few things that you do have to pay for because it's a dinner. Right. Um, what, what does it cost to attend that dinner? So tickets are $14.20. And children are $8.55. Uh -huh. And I'm sorry, but I don't think I found out what date that is. So this is February 8th. Okay, so we've got Bernard Sweeney and his quartet. Yes. And if, if I'm correct, I think he's played all over the country, right? Pretty famous group. He's a renowned musician. Mm -hmm. He's played. Are they from here or from this area? The, the area, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they, he's played with Roberta Flack. Oh, really? Um, Reuben Brown. It's really... Fantastic. Yeah, so we're quite honored to have him have. here. And, and I have, have heard that quartet two or three times at this particular mm -hmm. event. It, it's really marvelous. It's my favorite part. Um, then later that evening, that same evening, we have a, um, I've never heard of this before, so I'm going to have to look at my notes, um, a spoken word and open mic night. I know what an open mic night is, but what is a spoken word night? So this is an opportunity for community members, uh, including local high schoolers and mm -hmm. university students, to share their, their art, artistry with us, um, to speak about the theme of black mm -hmm. migrations, but then also more broadly um, experiences related to African Americans in this country. So a person can just get up and start talking? Absolutely. Is there class participation? <laughs> no. no. Not that I know. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of open mic nights where people sing. So, you know, sometimes they ask for songs and that sort of thing. No. Yeah. It's an opportunity for community members, uh, including local high schoolers and university students, to share some of their spoken artistry with the public. So this can be poems that they've written, poems mm -hmm. that they've memorized from other places, um, general thoughts and um, feelings that they have about the contemporary moment in our society. Mm -hmm. But typically it, it follows the theme of Black History Month or African American History Month. If a community member wants to be a part of that, how do they sign up? They just attend. Just, we'll, we'll just, just attend, mic. it's open, and they just yes. go up and talk. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. Have they done this before? I didn't Last year. remember that. Yes. They did? Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. I missed that. Yes. Okay. And then the final event for the month is a documentary screening. And I mm -hmm. think then there's a panel discussion afterwards. What's the film this year? This year the film is Talking Black in America. And we'll have a, a panel of, of Salisbury University professors in the English department and also education professors who will really speak about how um, black vernacular English is part of American English and culture, more broadly speaking, and how there are these debates about its uh, viability in the education system in our country. That's an, an interesting question. Um, where will that take place? So this screening will take place on Thursday, February 28th at mm -hmm. 6 p.m. in Fulton Room 111. All right, the screening and then followed by the panel discussion. Correct. Excellent. Yeah. Um, all of these events are free and open to the public besides the dinner, am I right? That's correct. We really aim um, on the African American History Month Committee and also at SU to make these events as accessible as possible to as many people in the community. Mm -hmm. It'd be also great to get some of the high school students involved in and hearing some of these great speakers. Absolutely. You know, mm. if, if anybody ever says they're bored in this town, yeah. they're boring. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so much going on, and I just admire all the uh, work that you guys do to, to bring you. this to our community and to the, the college community as well. So again, I thank you so much for sharing all this with us today. Thank you very much for having me. And now, 
Here's a look at what's happening on the campus in February.
June Krell Salgado, SU Cultural Affairs Director, joins us now to discuss some more of the events happening on the campus this semester. Welcome, June. Oh, thank you. So glad to see you again. And I have to tell you, I'm in awe of what your office does, and I don't know how you do it. With all, I counted 30 different events this spring, this semester. Is that right? That's correct. I don't know. How, how do you keep all those balls in the air? It, you may have to do more hands than most people, I guess. No one does anything alone. I have a wonderful so assistant. There's a fantastic technical crew and catering crew, and there's a bevy of people that help things go forward. Well, I would hope so, because there's yes. no way one person could do this alone. So you have, in fact, four events coming up in February, if I'm yes. correct. And the first is called The Crossing. Yes. I know nothing about The Crossing. So who is The Crossing? The, the Crossing is the 2017 Grammy Award-winning choral group out of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The group will come. Uh, it's going to be a very special night. We are dedicating it to Dr. Ernie Bond. Mm -hmm. And he was um, in the education department, the late Ernie Bond. Um, he won the Hans Christian Andersen Award in children's literature. And they're actually performing next uh, Wednesday on the 6th, a number called The Little Match Girl Passion from Hans Christian Andersen. So is it going to be a play or, no, I mean, it's, it's, a it's just a choral number. rendition of yes. Hans Christian Andersen. And a little addition to that, uh, our choral students from SU mm -hmm. are doing a workshop with them and they're actually going to perform one number with the Grammy Award winning group That's on stage called Make Peace. That's fantastic. Yeah. So they, they won the Grammy yes. Award. And where, did they just perform all over the country, all yes. over the world? Yes, they are, I hate to use this word, but they're world famous. World famous, yeah. wow. And they're next Sixth. Wednesday, okay. Wednesday the 6th. 6th. Okay, and at Holloway Hall? Holloway Hall, 7 p.m. Okay, as are most of the events, right? At Holloway With Hall? With cultural affairs. Okay. Theirs were mostly 7 p.m. It's free and open to the public. No tickets are required. Uh, that's amazing. Well, I've got to put that on my calendar. Um, now, not even a week after that, you're bringing um, Imago Theater's Frogs to campus. Have they been here before? Yes. Imago was here in 2016, and they did their award-winning show, Zuzu. Um, Zuzu, as well as Frogs, have played on Broadway. Mm -hmm. They're award-winning. We are doing a full school performance as well as a public performance. Oh, you are? You mean you're to ship the children into the... Yes. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. We have so many that have signed up. We have a waiting list. I love that. That's so mm -hmm. great. So it is it... I've never seen this kind of theater, but is it sort of Cirque du Soleil-ish? In a way. Uh -huh. They combine mime, acrobatics, dance, and puppetry. Mm -hmm. mm. It's so a great family event. It's for children of all ages. <laughs> that's a good way of putting yes. it. Yes. That's great. Okay, so that's free to the public too. Absolutely, and no tickets are required. So 7 o'clock on the... The 12th. The 12th. The 12th yes. is the Imago pr presentation. It's Tuesday, called Frogs February with 12th. a Z. Yes, Frogs and with an a explanation Z. point. Gosh. Now, a new troupe is coming to campus called the Brid... Bridgman Packer Dance. Yes. And I understand they're not your average dance company. Tell not, me a little bit about them. Not at all. The cultural emphasis for this year was the intersection of art and science. Okay. And their performance is a perfect example of that. They take live performance and video technology and do a piece called Voyeur. It's based on American painter Edward Hopper's work. Mm -hmm. So they um, have his work in the background or... On a film? or uh, There are projections while mm -hmm. they're dancing around it. Now, the evening before, on um, 218, they are going to do an interactive installation and an artist talk the evening before at 7 p.m. So setting up the stage for them. And it's contextualizing for everyone mm -hmm. that can come. And people can actually go and participate. It's an interactive installation the night before. and then Is it something children would like? Children and adults. Okay. So again, but, another family. Mm -hmm. Then day. Tuesday, the 19th, is where they actually have their public performance. And they do pieces, voyeur, and they also do bed table mirror. 
That just sounds fascinating to me. Very different kind of a dance company, yeah. It's very different. Wow. And um, they just won the 2017 Bessie Award in New York. What is that? And that's a dance um, award for independent dancers in New York. And it was on best performance. And they're coming to little old Salisbury. We're so lucky. It's amazing. You're bringing the world here to our community. And then even a few days later, you have two mid-Atlantic choral groups, gospel yes. groups, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell One me a bit called the Legendary Ingramants and the Northern Kentucky Brotherhood. They're part of a tour called Lift Me Up um, Gospel. They sing in the Jubilee gospel style. It's very uplifting. Mm -hmm. um, it's, they will be singing together. And also the SU Gospel Choir will also be doing a workshop with them and they will be singing one of their renditions as well as in the finale with them. So it's a wonderful opportunity for our students and the community. I've got to get my calendar set for all this because it's very exciting that, that this Thank quality you. of entertainment is coming and it's free. Yes. Just amazing. And I'm sorry, I didn't get the date for them. February 23rd. Wow. Such diversity too. I mean, all within a few weeks of each other. Um, why do you think it's important to have this kind of a diverse program? Well, we, we look to enrich all segments of mm -hmm. campus and the community. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people that are more interested in choral ensembles. Um, I think it's always important to provide things for the children. The children are our future supporters and makers of the arts, mm -hmm. so. And possible SU attendees. And, That's correct. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I'm thinking which ones my grandchildren would love the most, and I think the frogs will be they will amazing. They will frogs. Amazing for them, yeah. Now, as you said earlier when you started, I don't do this alone. I think you have several agencies that help you in, I guess, funding some of the performances? Well, I write grants to different agencies, mm -hmm. and uh, the Mid-Atlantic Mid Arts Foundation they have several different types of grants available. Mm -hmm. um, SU is now part of their folk and traditional network tour. Mm -hmm. um, they, of course, our own Salisbury Wicomico Arts Council is always generous and helps mm -hmm. us provide these opportunities for the public. Okay, so you work with them on some of these. I, I didn't understand that there well, was Well, I, I write grants to them, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. they actually are helping support the frogs and the monks this year. Um, one of the greatest uh, philanthropic couples that we have that have helped SU in so many ways are Peter and Judy Jackson. Yes. And we have named the Chamber Music Series after them for their, all their generous do donations. Um, when will they be here and what can we expect from that? Well, this year we're actually doing a Peter and Judy Jackson Chamber Music Festival. Oh my gosh. There what? will be. In February? <laughs> there will be two events, uh -huh. um, two days apart. We are having the Morgenstern Trio from Germany, mm -hmm. an award-winning, beautiful ensemble that will be in the Great Hall at 7 p.m., and that will be on Monday the 25th. And then on Wednesday the 27th, we will have the Russian String Orchestra. Now, they've been here before, but they were here as the Chamber Orchestra Kremlin from Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, they changed their name. It's a 17-piece all-string ensemble. Mm. They're exquisite. I bet. They will be in Holloway Hall Auditorium. Again um, at 7 o'clock? At 7 o'clock. Okay. Free and no tickets required. I think required. we just need to, to camp out <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the lawn at Holloway Hall, though, t though it's pretty cold to do that in February, but because uh, it's just every night, practically, there's something great there's going on. Quite a few things this February. There really, there really are. So that's in March, right? That's correct. Uh, the Morgenstern Trio from Germany will be March 25th, and the Russian String Orchestra will be Wednesday, March 27th. And one of my favorites are the monks um, of the Dripang Losling Monastery. Yes. I got that right? And their colorful sand mandalas. Yes. And tell me a little bit about that. I know they've been here before. This will be the seventh time mm -hmm. that our monks will be in residency. The first time they came, it was uh, unfortunately serendipitous. They came in 2001, right after 9-11. Oh. 
And when they came, they immediately created uh, a mandala for healing. There are different types of uh, mandalas. Mm -hmm. They're meditational tools, and, and they're made by um, putting small uh, drops of sand in beautiful patterns that, all, that are imbued with meanings. Mm -hmm. The colors mean something. The symbols mean something. I, I witnessed it um, mm -hmm. maybe two years ago. How long are they here? They will be here for a week. And it is remarkable what they do. It is remarkable. It's very intense. So they do switch off teams. While they're here, of course, they'll do all the associated ceremonies involved with the mandala. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Opening ceremonies, consecration, dispersal. But they'll also be providing two lectures. One on the meaning of the mandala. All the symbols, all the colors. Mm -hmm. And it will help people understand the experience That's better. That's great. There will be another on meditation for stress relief. Really? <laughs> yes. And they're going to be doing a demonstration on monastic life. They'll be doing dancing, uh, chanting, and that'll be in Holloway Hall Auditorium. All of these wonderful things that we've been talking about are free to the public. Our community is welcome to come. Absolutely. Anybody, and it's usually at 7 o'clock in Holloway Hall. Of course, when the monks are there, it'll be from 10 in the morning until where, where 7 in the evening. It? They will do it in the Great Hall. Of okay. Holloway Hall. Oh, okay. Everything will occur in the Great Hall, with the exception of the demonstration of monastic life, and that will occur in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. There will also be in the social room coloring sheets for children, and there'll be a community mandala where anyone in the community can use the tools and the colored sand, and there'll be several facilitators that yeah. will help them. The tool that's used is called a chalk pour, and they will be instructed on on how to do it. Now we've talked about so many things mm -hmm. and I see that you have in your hands a yes. uh, really worthwhile publication that I keep on my desk. Um, this is how this is one way uh, through the Panorama publication, thank you very much, that yes. we see here that you can find out more about each of these events and it's got a good little calendar in there so you yes. can see and read about each of the events we've talked about today. Um, where else might we find all this information? Of course on, on Salisbury University's website. Okay. Um, the Cultural Affairs Office has a Facebook account. Oh, okay. It's Cultural Affairs at Salisbury University. There's also a weekly uh, news email that the Office of Cultural Affairs sends out. And it'll say what's happening this week at Cultural I need to get Affairs. on that list. And it has sound bites. There are videos on it and information that help flesh out what the event's all about. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been such a pleasure talking to you, Jude. And I, again, don't know how you do all you do, but mm -hmm. I thank you for it. And our community thanks you for it. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for having me. Absolutely. I'd like to thank my guests, Dr. Aston Gonzalez, Assistant Professor of History and Chair of SU's African American History Month Committee, and June Krell Salgado, SU Cultural Events Director. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University on the Air. Thank you for watching.